Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I am Lady Calamere, and this is my 48th video presentation. And tonight, I will be discussing the god Hephaestus. Hephaestus is one of the 12 Greek Olympians. And... He's very powerful, but a lot of people don't know a lot about him because he's kind of glossed over. Even when I was going to school and learning about the Greek, as they call the Greek myths, I guess because he wasn't seen as sexy or as uh, entertaining, or outlandish. Hephaestus has different myths and some are a little bit contradicting and I'll get into that. Hephaestus, his attributes a fire, a forge, the hammer, axe, his, his crescent moon axe, the tong, tongs that hold the metal, his animals, or definitely the crab, and the donkey, that's his mount that he rides thanks to Dionysius. His color red, black, and like bronze. Bronze. His number is nine. His original wife was Aphrodite. And in which they get divorced. And then he mar later on has a consort, Agalia. And I believe they actually got married. And his uh, favorite people, Hephaestus' favorite people, are murder metal workers. And I'm going to get into this. You're going to like, what? what are you talking about? People who make robotics and AIs. Smiths. Sculptors. Potters. Jewelers. Shamans. Ceramics. And people who make works of art out of anything like metal and crafting with fire. I mean, you use a forge to make glass. Beautiful, like, you know, have you ever seen glass made by cra art master craftsmen? Yep. And people discount those people as favored by... Hephaestus because they don't know his stories, but yeah, they are his people. Now, his he has a place in Hephaestus, yes, but he also has the island of Lemnos and any volcan volcanoes, as he is said to create volcanic activity especially when he's lighting up the fire, fire firing up his forge and making his crafts he has close relations with Athena and some believe that maybe they were consorts but they say Athena is a virgin and they literally see her as a literal virgin or, but he actually even shares a temple with her where half of it, half the temple is his and half the temple is hers. 
So let's talk a little bit about the stories of his birth. Now, Homer, not Homer Simpson, Homer, says that when he was born, he was born of Zeus and Hera. And as, like he's going to say, Zeus and Hera were his parents. And that when he was born, he was not beautiful looking. And he did have like a lame foot. And he was hairy. And Hera did not like the way she he looked and was disgusted so she threw him off Mount Olympus and he fell. A twice fallen god as we're going to get through this. Now Hesiod says no, 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 no. Hesiod said and was, that he had no father. That out of jealousy of that Zeus gave birth to Athena, she created Hephaestus. But since he was born of no father, he was deformed, only born of a mother and ugly. So that's why she threw him off Mount Olympus. Here's a problem with that. Also, even though I believe Apollodorus said that. Here's a problem with that. Before he was born, and, and mind you, Zeus gives birth to Adina, drew his head, but he had a massive headache. See, he swallowed uh, the, his uh, other consort, Metis, because it was prophesied that one of the children will usurp Zeus of his throne. So he swallows her. And he had a terrible headache. And Hephaestus comes along, supposedly before he was born, with his... Sorry, I'm taking a drink. With his uh, crescent moon axe. And opened up the head of Zeus. And out pops Athena. So that's a little bit impossible. Even for a god to do something before before they were born. Just keep that in mind now. So. I'm more attuned to. Homer's story about Hephaestus. That makes a lot more sense to me. Now twice fallen God. Is that. You know as an adult. He. he Hera and Zeus once again gets into a fight. And he takes the side of Hera and Zeus was really pissed because Zeus is a king of gods and how dare you take her side he picks him up and throws him off Olympus and he threw him so hard and so fast that he fell for a whole day and fell into the ground and got really crippled and lamed so we see that story with him now, when he was a baby, when he was drawn off by Hera, let's go back, he was not alone. For Uranomi and Thetis is the one that raised him and even gave him a forge when he was a baby. In which he worked. Now we have some comparisons and contrast with him and Athena, whom he's like the midwife of. Well, mid not midwife, he's not a wife, but he helped give birth. He helped Zeus give birth. He cracked the head of Zeus open so that she may be born. One day I'll discuss Athena. Or Athena, as people like to call her. So Hephaestus, Hephaestus is a divine smith, but so is Athena. Here's a little bit different, is that he was making, well, he could make different items for the gods, we'll get into it. But he was making woman's jewelry. Well, she was making 
you know, weapons. So, so as a girlhood, in her girlhood, she spent her girl, she spent her childhood hammering out spears for male warriors, while Hephaestus spent his boyhood crafting women's jewelry for women. So, Hephaestus, he's, his course is uh, Element of Fire, as well as Molten Earth, which is Fire and Rock. Hephaestus was really loved in Athens very much. So things that about Hephaestus is that he's not seen as very handsome, but this is like a really cool statue that I got. I, I do want to show this up. And here... He's not shown as ugly or lame. Yeah. Most of the times he's seen with a beard, but sometimes he could be seen like this with a clean face, but this is more of a fantasy work. So I'll talk about Festus while I'm showing off this really heavy statue. It's really, really heavy. And I do not want to break it because I won't be able to buy this again. It's not about the money. It's just I can't find it. And hopefully Mr. Shadow. Say everyone say hello to Shadow. He's our presentation cat. Oh, I woke him up too bad. So Festus is his his temperament is pretty peaceful. He's Towards the other gods, he's more calm. He's more understanding. I mean, yes, he can get angry, but he's not as quick to his temper as the other gods. So, even though he's the god of forge and fire, he's kind of approachable. He's pretty approachable. And that he... Uh, people are like, well, of course, he doesn't work magic. Um, you better think that again because some of the tools he creates are magical. Like when he divorced, him and Aphrodite divorced. And she was pregnant before the divorce with the, with the uh, daughter of Ares. 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 Harmonia is her daughter. Really, Mew Mew? And he decided to, as a gift, in quotations, to craft the necklace of Harmonia, which anyone who wore it, I mean, anyone who wore it, would have great tragedy. Oh, he did that and gave it to Aphrodite, in which, of course, Aphrodite gave it to Harmonia. It says that it was he that crafted the girdle for Aphrodite which is very powerful now the thing that both Hesiod and Homer describe Hephaestus as the cripple foot god and the lame one and also supporting the, the Achaeans and the, the Achaeans in the Trojan War. So, other names. And he has quite a few names and epitaphs and things that I remember from the top of my head. Oh, also his other attributes. Shoot. Let me go through his attributes again. Because... I totally forgot some things. Fire, the forge, right? The tongs, the hammer. The 
the pilos, which is a type of like conical hat, a workman's hat cap, the volcano, and the leather apron. The crescent moon axe. Can't forget that. So anyways, his epithets. He's called the lame one. The crooked foot. The outcast. He's also known as the fallen god. I don't want happen, or you can call him the twice fallen. The divine armorer. Maker or creator of glorious habitations. He is also known as the purifier of guilt. The nursling of the sea, which I described why he was raised by Uranomi and Thetis. Divinity manifest on earth. He's also known as the maker of the ship of the sun. He is manifester of sacredness also manifester of holiness. He's called the visible fire, the divine craftsman, or even the divine artisan, maker of wonderful habitations, captor of beauty and texture of metal, or sometimes seen as steel. His planetary attributions have been put on as Mars. So if you want to know his planetary affiliations, it would be more of Marshall. But that's more of craft, more fire craftsman than of war. But he does make weapons of war. As he does even make weapons for heroes as well as for gods. So, he is a uh, A god who has made, said to even make in the, in the stories, Persephone under the command of Zeus. And which, hey, you know, that's pretty cool. You ever hear the story of Persephone? I mean, not Persephone. Oh, oh, what's her name? Not Persephone. Sorry, 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 sorry. Pe Penelope, I believe it was. The first woman. Not Persephone. Scratch that. The first, uh, the woman that, that, uh, who bore the gifts. What was her name? Penelope? Pandora. Sorry. <laughs> Pandora. Not Penelope. Doi. I don't write these things. Please forgive me. Pandora. Pandora's box. So in which all the grief, the different griefs and sickness was brought upon mankind. Pandora. Please forgive me. I don't write anything down. So everything comes from my head. So Pandora. <laughs> Mount Etna is also one of the haunts of uh, his favorite places of Hephaestus. So, like the other gods, he's not he's not seen as beautiful or sightly or you know, God's gift to women. But he is a kind god, and he's quite giving. So, how did he come to marry Aphrodite, Aphrodite, Aphrodite? There is two stories. One is that Zeus married off Aphrodite. 
to Hephaestus to prevent a war happening between the other gods over her hand in marriage. So she was pretty much forced into marriage. Another one was, you remember how Hera threw him off? Mount Olympus, where he decided to get her back. And also there's another story of him wanting to know who he was and why was he throwing off Mount Olympus. Is that he made a beautiful throne. A beautiful, absolutely gorgeous throne fit for any queen. The queen, not just any queen, the queen of queens. And very comfortable too. And it was, he, he made sure that, you know, Hera knew who it was from. And Hera was like, oh, oh I threw my son off. Wow, what the Olympus. But oh, wow, what a beautiful chair. So she decided to sit in it and she was very comfortable. But when she tried to get up, she couldn't get off the chair. Now, as she tried to pull herself off, there was like invisible binds on her. And she could not fulfill her duties. And the gods try to get her off. None of them can get her off. Not even Zeus can get her off the chair. So they went to Hephaestus and they said, please get your mother off this chair. Unbind her. She can't fulfill her duties. And he flat out, no, no, let her, let her stay there. I don't care. She can stay there for eternity. And he was really pissed. So it was through the acts of Dionysius, bringing him to, getting him drunk, bringing him to Mount Olympus, riding a donkey. Remember I said donkey is his animal, his mount. So it was convincing through Dionysius or people like to say Dionysus, but Dionysius. And the other gods, they pro they said they'll give him a home on Olympus. They'll, they'll let him have a forge there. They promised him this and that. And what sealed it was the hand of Aphrodite in marriage. And Hephaestus was like, really? The most beautiful of all the goddess? The beautiful goddess? Wonderful goddess? The one that everyone wants all the gods wants her hand and he thought you know I can really take care of her I can make her beautiful jewelry I could protect her I could do so much for her he agreed so he let his mother off the throne and in which the hand of Aphrodite was given to him Aphrodite did not want to marry him to her she was ugly and he actually did make her beautiful jewelry and the girdle and everything else but she had her eye on the god Ares A-R-E-S which is people like to pronounce Ares but it's Ares and one day they pretty much got sloppy with their meetings and their watch fell asleep and Festus found out so the next time they were going to have their sexual trist, he made a, 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 a fine net that no one can see, but this net will be unbreakable. And as the two lovers met to commit adultery once again, the net fell upon them and he could not get out. And there's some stories that he drugged them to, drugged them to and from the other gods and goddesses in Olympus or just brought the gods and goddesses to look at them and laugh at them. And some of the goddesses were shocked, but the gods were like, oh, I wish it was me. Like Hermes said, I wish it was me with Aphrodite. So it was Poseidon who was the one to convince Hephaestus to let them go. And of course, at this point, Aphrodite was always preg already pregnant with Harmonia with Ares. And Ares was in the, had to pay an adulterous fine to agree to do that. So, of course, Aphrodite and, and Hephaestus has a divorce. Why are you doing this to me, Mew Mew? Why? Here he is, Sir Mew Mew. No, we're not playing sit on mommy's lap. Because I know exactly what you're going to do. You're going to knock over the tripod or you're going to jump right for the statue. No. 
You do horrible, terrible things. And you do them very well, Sir Mimeo. I'll be real pissed at you if you break the statue. I'll just be pissed. I won't be able to do anything else. He breaks a lot of statues and I just either have to fix them or buy new ones. So, what can you do, right? Either you can have nice things or you can have cats. And a cat lover is always going to choose cats. So, anyways, back to the story. Back to the stories. Yay. So... Now, there's a little known myth, but it's out there, but it's not too popular. And this little myth, known myth was that Hephaestus never really fell from the sky at all. It was Hera, his mother, afraid for her baby that Zeus would kill her son, seeing how ugly he was, and took him away to the island of Lemnos. So, and apprenticing him to her, her, her friend, which his name was Kadalian, who was a master craftsman, master forge and smith to teach him everything. So, but that's a, that's like, not really all that accepted, even in today's standards. Please Mew Mew, sir Mew Mew down. Good boy. Fucking nudge. So Hephaestus was a great, incredible, and powerful craftsman that even his creation can breathe, move, and even talk or speak. I mean, he made golden dogs he, that were guards. He pa fashioned Pandora. He even uh, had his female assistants, AI. Remember I said about robotics? That can, that can help him and assist him in his work. Golden woman that can talk, think, work, move. So, for, talk about robotics, right? And AI. Also... He is very powerful with that, and he can even craft magic into it, and he can make chains that are unbreakable. And it says that those chains were used on Zeus, and when they were trying, to, when some of the gods were trying to usurp him, they used the chains of Hephaestus. It was also when Hera was hung from the sky by her ankles was used chains of Hephaestus. So some people credit the first net was made by Hephaestus and that even a net can be attributed, the metal net attributed to Hephaestus. So what are the stories? Uh, Hephaestus doesn't have as many stories or that I can find of. I mean, you find stories about Athena, Artemis, Zeus, but not a lot on Hephaestus. So, those, so, okay, so some of the things, what did he make? He built thrones and palaces for other gods. He made Pandora. He made a chariot of Helios. Remember I told you one of his names? For a chariot for the god Helios, who he uses to pull the sun across the sky each day. 
He made the chains that chained down Prometheus. The the adam what is it? Adamantine chains that bound the great Titan to the to the mountain. I'll I'll get into that one day about Prometheus. Now it's also said that he makes the arrows for Apollo and Artemis. They are magical arrows. Not just any arrow. He made the Aegis for Zeus. That famous breastplate, depending on the story or shields, that sometimes even Athena, and sometimes for Athena. The armor for Heracles and Achilles. He also forged the clappers to, so that they can use against the, their enemies. So one, uh, some of his assistants in the forge were the Cyclopses, which we call Cyclops, but it's pronounced actually Cyclopses in Greek. And he it wasn't just any other Cyclops. These were really good Cyclopses that knew how to work with the forge. Now, after the, the breakup between him and Aphrodite, he marries Aglaea. Now, there is a river god that he defeats in the Trojan War. The river god Scamander. Scamander. S-C-A-M-A-N-D-E-R, I believe it's. And this was during the Trojan War. It is also he that was... That, uh... He is a guardian... for Typhon that he will never be able to get out and wreak havoc upon the world that he guards him under Mount Etna that he's pretty much the jailer and of course he was asked him to do it so he did it and he knew he should do it So, Hephaestus has been used by shamans, and some people say he can actually help you do divination. I know that's something that has been glossed over again because, you know, people were more interested in the stories of Athena and Artemis, and it's such a loss. You know, it really is. So other things is that his Roman counterpart is the god Vulcan. And they have a lot of similar things between them. But Vulcan is his uh, counterpart. Usually, I'm going to tell you that he's usually with, he's also called one of the names also, I forgot, the furry face and the hairy one, the club foot. I, I should really write things down, but I don't, I don't like to write things down. I don't like to do, uh, pre, uh um, what's it called? I can't remember. <laughs> PowerPoints or anything else like that. So some, usually he's consider, he has like a bearded hairy face and hairy eyebrows and he's he's got this huge upper body but legs that can support him. So actually because of that, he actually forged supports like braces for his legs, leg braces to help him walk. And 
there's one story about how the gods laughed at him that he was like pouring wine for the gods for them to drink and as he was walking from one god to another they were laughing at him because of the way he was walking pretty much mocking him and bullying him how nice yet he becomes honored because of his works and the gifts that he can make and the beautiful jewelry So other things is that he does have some children. He has children, I think maybe by some, by Aphrodite, but I know by Aglaia. And again, those are also glossed over and his children or Thalia some of them I can't even put, I, I, I don't remember because I can't pronounce so I don't remember the Euclea Euphemi Euthenia Kabiri so those are some of his children that are his now, he doesn't have as many children as, like, Poseidon or Zeus, and that's fine. So, what else can I tell you about Hephaestus? By the way, I got this statue on Amazon, and I got it on a sale, and it came broken. And I was really sad. This I had to fix, and I had to fix up here. The arm was totally off, but I really like this statue. It's absolutely beautiful. It's like considered a fantasy statue. And you can see the, well, there's a lot of uh, shadow here, but of course we got shadow here. So, like I said, his favorite his favorite island is Lemnos. It's where he grew up in. And this is a god that works a lot. This is not a lazy god. And he he helps people. He is the one that is the energy of work. He is create by fire he's a creation of what fire can do what can be used for and you ever hear the stories of a goon i'm not saying they're the same god they're not please do not the, the original goon is not the same thing as asbestos but they both work very hard and Hephaestus is very built because of the work he does, the forge, and uh, he's not keen on lazy people, on people who just want to sit down and watch TV and play video games all day and do nothing and say they can't work when they really can and they just want to live off of other people. He's not, if you're going to be like that, uh, Hephaestus is not keen on that because Hephaestus has has issues too with his legs and he does work and of course he's a god but you know I mean I know there's people with disabilities and Hephaestus doesn't blame them it's the people that can work and pretend to be disabled is where you know there's an issue with So, he's able to put his powers into his creations. I mean, this god even made guard dogs. So, 
so and his creations can walk talk and like i said pandora the first woman i know i said penelope before i'm sorry uh, Hephaestus, he is he presides over a mystery tradition which deals with shamanism he's not only a, a a guardian like i said before but he's also a healer and those who have prosthetic legs listen up those who have prosthetic legs or prosthetic any arms or or, or knee, knee braces i've had to use knee braces and those who have any braces like backs you hephaestus will be more he 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 and he will empathize with you okay why is my evil genius sign turned over so those who actually make prosthetics something i forgot or also have hephaestus could be their patron so if you're making prosthetics for for whatever prosthetic hand prosthetic arm prosthetic leg or making braces back braces knee braces leg braces there's shadow again hephaestus can be your patron now hephaestus is a pretty stubborn deity when he wants to be he does have sensitive emotions and he can hold a grudge if really offended he will get back and like i said he has to be propitiated for him to really change his mind like with capturing his wife with Ares, Ares, or with the problem with what he did to Hera, how Dionysius had to get him drunk, and conv and he had to be convinced to do things otherwise. And he he is he did help Zeus give birth to Athena, so Athena and him do get along very well. So, those two, even today, can continue to be venerated together. So, just to let you know about that. And they're both craft. She's, she's, a, she's a master craftswoman and spinster. He is a master uh, craftsman and of the forge. So other things, what do I want to else talk about him? So, sacred sites. Again, let's go into that. Let me see if I remember. Lemnos and all volcanic islands, any volcan volcanoes are sacred to him. Sicily is sacred. Of volcanic islands like Hiera, Lipari, Imbros, sacred to him. And and like I said, he Athena, Athena and him share a shrine in Athens. So offerings, what do you want to give? What do you want to give to Hephaestus? Okay. You can give him wine, especially Greek and Italian wines. You can give him seashells. Because remember, he was raised on the island of Lemnos and by the sea nymphs. Red, black candles and gold candles. He does like mermaids. Some people put mermaids on his altar, believe it or not. And again, that comes from him being raised in Lemnos. He likes, and he likes the tools, smith tools. So, you can give him that. 
or you can go to a botanica and I've seen them little tools that are meant for like arishas like the hammer and the anvil you can put like anvil on you'll find these little metal tools you could put it on his altar work tools um, grapes of course notice that a lot of the gods like grapes you can make him things from your forge if you, if you work with fire like glass that you made or gla or have it made for, and give it to him like glass bowls or anything metal from the forge I keep going on with that uh, crap shells That's a good idea. I do like to give a lot of my deities different types of uh, sweets and chocolates. So fire is a good example, but be careful. Don't burn your home down. So those are pretty cool things that you give to him. So what do I want to close this up with? So <sighs> never make fun of how he looks. That's another thing. If you call him, and if he does show up, don't make fun of him. Whatever you do. That's pretty fucked up anyways to do. So, if you're going to call him and make fun of him and mock him, well, too bad. I don't feel sorry for you. Because that's fucked up. Other things that I want to close up with is Dionysius and Dionysius and Hephaestus do get along very well. They really do. Now, it's not that he hates Zeus, he doesn't, but it's again, it's just what happened to him. Now, what else do I want to talk about? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. If you have a problem with your legs or arms, you can pray to Hephaestus to help you heal. And you can always give him the... Uh, brace or anything that you had as a thanks to him or you can you if you, if you can't leave it anywhere or leave it on your altar you can get rid of it but always thank thank Festus for helping you so Hephaestus is a pretty cool deity but he's so undervalued, even in the pagan community. Everyone wants to work with this god and that god. And that's why I really wanted to bring up Hephaestus. And I, I, I really, I've had this statue for many, many years. And this is actually the first presentation I've ever done on Hephaestus. Not just on video, but I've never done one in my presentations. And I never got the chance, unfortunately. And look how he's made of fire, like the veins of fire going up you see that he's got his foot that's not blood that's fire let's get a closer look so things are going to tell you leave you off today don't make fun of people with infirmities instead of making fun of them help them you know if you see someone walking with a cane I mean I walk with a cane you know, outside, hold the door for them, you know, be kind, and remember to always be kind to animals, even when they act up in your presentations, or once the Brita Madonna, he, 
this this cat i gotta tell you he loves the presentation the last I, he thought i was actually doing one the other day because i was setting up my altar to do some spiritual work and i didn't have the camera and i didn't wasn't ready to do magic and this cat got so mad he literally knocked everything off the altar he was like rah, rah, rah. so i literally pulled out the phone and put it on the tripod <laughs> he calmed down so this cat has been looking all day to be on the video so this is shadow he is officially 17 this month 17 years old so remember wish him a happy birthday he loves attention by the way so and i said i was gonna jokingly name this shadow king of olympus <laughs> oh shadow of olympus <laughs> that sounds better shadow of olympus but anyways thank you for watching i want to thank you my viewers and so does shadow he wants to thank you for being my viewer and let me show you my other cats do not over my hips this not true he's sleeping now so let me show you my walking through my home there's lady boss who is acting up before and there's sir mew mew i don't know where miss kitty is so i can't show you miss kitty i don't know where she is but we have four cats and three of them were rescued. And remember, be kind to others, be kind to animals. And thank you for watching. And thank I want to thank give a special thanks to all those who like this like my videos, who have made kind comments, and those who are my subscribers. Thank you and blessed be.